Um, he wanted to talk to me about, it looks like, well, the cutters. Yes, exactly. We have a few questions. And the first is, how did it come about that we sell our own cutters? Um, we have sold cutters for a lot of years. And we had more and more clients asking us to uh, have an, a little bit uh, better priced alternative and also to have different sizes than we normally would have. And so we reached out to a company that creates cutters, that uh, manufactures cutters, and gave them a few of our specifications in order to have what we think is the ideal cutter for the German and European market. Um, the first small change we did was actually that we would change the main size from what is normally 60 millimeters to 70 millimeters long. Um, the main reason is that with 60 millimeters you can cut a normal um, Euro profile very good, but as soon as you have a protection plate in front of it that protects against um, pulling out the core, then 60 millimeters might be not long enough. So people were, were buying a 60 millimeter uh, milling tool or a bore and a 80 millimeter bore to find the best balance. And we were thinking, okay, why sell two different sizes? We can go and do a 70 millimeter size so you can have the best of both worlds and you don't have a, uh, a bore that is so long because the longer the bore gets, the easier it is to break it, obviously. So this was one of the main changes we did. And the second change is that we changed the length of the cutting area to be about, I think, 25 millimeters. Um, the main reason is that the pins itself are always on the first 25, maximum 27 millimeters of the uh, Euro profile cell cylinder. So um, with a 25 millimeter long bore or cutting area, you will always be able to reach all the pins and you don't need to move in and out so much in the cylinder. And then we wanted to address the pricing a little bit and make sure to offer a, a brewer at a more reasonable pricing while still um, offering our uh, the brewers from the old manufacturer too because we know that a lot of clients prefer to, to use these ones and um, I don't want to completely change it because if you, they are still, while a bit more expensive, they have a slightly higher um, amount of, of locks you can cut, but it's not a huge difference normally, but I know that a lot of clients still prefer the old ones, especially with the old measurements of 60 millimeters and 80 millimeters. What differs our milling cutters from the others in our range? Um, Yes, you can get our cutters up to 150 millimeters. The other cutters you can get, I think, even longer. I think 170 or 200 millimeters or something like this is the longest size for these ones. And um, we also offer them um, grinded down to a four millimeter size. So you have a six millimeter shank to be used in your straight grinder. And then you can actually have a four millimeter cutting area. So it's easier for you to go through a protection plate if you don't want to use a 3 millimeter cutter already. And uh, this one you can also get in 60 millimeters or 80 millimeters, depending on your preferences. So these are the main differences. And the more expensive cutters now, we talk to the manufacturer and they are also available with a special coating, which will even give them an increased um, usability, an increased lifetime. Um, but for our normal cutters, they will not be getting a coating, um, mainly because they are produced to have a good price to, uh, to usability ratio. And if you would do a coating, the price would go up but the increasement of the um, cutting time or the usability time isn't going up very much. So at the end, you would pay more per cylinder you destroy even with a coating for these cutters. While we are talking about the usage and the, the, how long you can use a cutter, normally you, it depends a lot on the uh, 
cylinders you, you destroy. We destroy a lot of five pin normal cylinders, um, no hardened pins for our seminars and normally one cutter will last you at least 30 to 40 um, cylinders. Um, obviously depending on how you use them. Uh, no. What lengths are available and what do you use each length for? Um, the 70mm cutter is normally like the all-rounder. This is also why we don't go lower. Um, there are manufacturers or sellers that sell 50mm, but 50mm for the 6mm uh, carpet burrs um, is often a little bit short. So we never sold 50mm or we did sell 50mm in the beginning, but stopped to sell them very quickly. Um, so the 70 is a normal usage. Some people prefer to have a 90mm to be able to go a little bit further in. Normally you wouldn't need it, but you might need it if you want to destroy an electronic lock and you want to go onto the electronic lock with an angle instead of straight onto the, into the electronics. This is also a possibility to open this electronic lock sometimes. In this case you might want a 90mm long boar. And then we offer also 120 and 150 millimeters for our cutters. These are mainly designed for um, for the safe working, uh, for the safe technicians. Could you please tell us which straight grinders are compatible? Um, they are compatible with all six millimeter straight grinders. So nearly all major brands have a straight grinder which has a six millimeter collet. Um, for example, we have here in Makita. Um, normally when you are going out, you would have a battery powered version of, of these um, for our seminars as we are going through 30 cylinders, a battery often dies after maybe 5, 6, 10 cylinders depending on the cylinder. So we are using a normal powered one, a cable one, and um, but you can also use uh, Bosch, you can use Milwaukee whatever uh, personal preference you have on the uh, brand. Especially when you have a battery powered version, you normally want to have the same battery for your drills and your uh, straight grinder and other power tools you have. Um, what we always recommend is to make sure that you have a long neck. Uh, this is mainly because this way you have a better uh, control over your device. Obviously, you can't use a uh, Dremel or other small sized um, tools. For this, you would have to use Meiji Boers, which are specially designed to be used with Dremel or other multi-tools like that. Great, thank you. Last but not least, would you show us the application ones? So obviously, we recommend to use uh, safety glasses while using uh, any Boers. Um, you have some different possibilities to attack a normal Euro profile cylinder. Um, let me use some HG Boer for explanation. Um, a lot of people go down here, which is the same area you would normally use a drill for. Um, the only problem is that you always go through sometimes hardened materials because this is a drill area. Uh, a lot of manufacturers put hardened steel pins inside. And uh, the next problem is that you have a uh, um, cut which is sometimes broken up by the pin areas which isn't perfect which is possible but isn't perfect um, what we have done from the beginning is we would go in up here and would start to destroy the pins uh, in the beginning what we did is we would go until the end and we would cut down moving in and out a little bit and destroy all of the pins at the same time the problem we realized is that especially with cheaper cylinders, what can happen is that while you're going down, um, you will hit the, the shear line, the uh, U-profile will start to turn and it might break your cutter. So what we now do in our seminars is we go until the end, we go back and we destroy one pin after another pin and for the last pin we go down here and push through the pin. This prevents the uh, core from turning and make sure that the cutters will stay um, sharp as long as possible. It will need a little bit longer than if you, if you would go through all the pins at the same time, but at the end you will only save a few, uh, maximum a minute, sometimes even less, um, but you will be able to use your cutter a lot longer, which is normally a huge benefit. Also, you are preventing the cutter from breaking by 
uh, preventing the core from turning. So all that we will do is now is we will put it to the position where the key already has uh, the guidance. We'll use the guidance, make it a little bit bigger, go straight, go to the end and then go one pin after another. So, as told before, the first thing we did is go completely until the end. What we now could do is we can use a pick or anything and just compress the pins and have them get out. And sometimes this is even enough to already be able to turn the cylinder, but I don't think we will be that lucky this time. No, it's also the main reason we are doing this is uh, to prevent the pins to be inside while we go on it again and uh, then the pin would hit the rotating brewer, the pin would rotate and it is possible that some of these um, elements of the cutter will break off in this case and you will hear a very loud noise as well the machine will not like it so whenever we get the tool out we will make sure to clean the cylinder out from as much debris as possible So I have done now the first one or two uh, pins and as told before we will go pin by pin and again I'm just stopping to, for me now as I stop I will now also remove the, the parts. What you want to do is you want to go a little bit lower than the actual core so you, you are over milling a little bit just to make sure you get everything out that you don't want inside. I have now already removed four of the five pins, so the last one we will just push through. And if we are lucky, there should already be enough so we can, we can turn the cylinder. opens the cylinder obviously if you want we could also close it or we can put the cylinder into the uh, direction we need to to get the cylinder out so we get the core into the needed position um, as you have seen while explaining it doesn't seem so fast but if you just do it in one go it's actually a very fast technique and when you go in the top instead of the bottom directly you will have a long life out of your cutters. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments down below and we will make sure to answer them. Um, as told before, you have other techniques as well. We know quite a few of them. This is the technique we prefer to make sure that the cutters will live as long as possible. Uh, but any technique that will at the end get you the, the cylinder to open will obviously be good. One last advice is that obviously you have to check with the cylinder and always go in the di direction of the pins. So for example, this is a normal pin cylinder now, so we go down. Most cylinders, you want you have the pins down, so you go in this direction. If you have a cylinder, for, this, for example, say a queso, you check and the pin positions are on 12, 3 and 6 o'clock. So if you would go down, it would just be a waste of time. You want to go in the direction of the pins always. <laughs>